Sometimes the sky is heavy and gray and dark. And just when we expect it the most, a rainbow turns up, showing us that it's just an illusion, everything is all right. That we are always protected. That we will always find our way back home, as our song says. Just be patient and know that these are times of deep inner purging. Love will embrace you whenever you want. Just close your eyes and open your heart. Welcome to this week's report. Hi there, Cancer, and welcome to your modern shaman, Maria Maria and Rainbowland, here with the weekly report, uh, a heartful forecast, actually, from the, the start of the 29th of October and at the 5th of November 2018. So this week we are out in the garden again <laughs> with another fire where I'm trying to clean up here. We have the water element, your element. We have the chart. We have a beautiful nature who is always giving her so much warmth and so much love if we allow ourselves to open up to receive it. And of course, you're really good at this, Cancer. And I was actually thinking about starting to take one card before we proceed sorry let's take one card before we proceed with the astrology this week just to do it a little differently and then we will go into the jupiter mercury conjunction afterwards because that's the most interesting thing in my opinion that happens this week so card of the week for the cancers uh, the astrology card we will move on with these cards afterwards at the end of the program so there's will be a lot, around 10 minutes for you guys just and with, with the cards and with the astrology and then at section two where we go deeper into the astrology and the collective for all of us in regards to cancer first house the body yes awesome awesome card to draw i know why we drew that so cancer really big thing is going to happen after this week and that is that the north node is going into your sign for one and a half year it's only there every 18th year it takes 18th year to get back to where it is now it's in leo the last week and then it goes into your first house where it's all about you your body your identity and your face in the world you are starting over destiny time is here it's the destiny point where you are living your purpose right now it's now what i talked about all summer that the cancer time will come this next week prepare yourself for that perch and be ready because now you're going to show the world how to be in the yin energy and we all want to know it we've been waiting for this and i have a very dear cancer friend and also cancer rising um, I see it all around, uh, how they're blossoming, how it's their time to shine, how, people, how the world little by little is opening up towards them. And some of course will be afraid of the cancer energy because that is what the world is not so good at. And that's why they're afraid. So don't worry if people are afraid of you and who you are with your body and your, your sweetness and your, your sensible sensitivity and your soft quietness. Well, it's because, ouch, there was something that burned me there. <laughs> it's because... Um, Ouch, it's, it's the nettles, they're burning me. There's nettles here. It's just because that we are not used to it. The Western society have brainwashed us into believing that it's all about the masculine energy, uh, which is also bad for the men. So this, is, uh, this applies, of course, to both Scorpio men and women. Um, and the thing is that um, we, this week, are having a Mercury and a Jupiter conjunction in Scorpio in your fifth house. This is going to reveal a lot to you about your creativity, about how you can shine and follow your heart. You will really understand fully with Jupiter is the grand projector that shows us the truth. Mercury is our understanding how to really rationalize and understand things. But since it's in Scorpio, a water sign, your sister sign, you're going to understand with your feeling, the true feelings, the truth about your situation, about how to follow your purpose, follow your heart and give it to the world. This is what you're going to understand with this aspect. We also have Venus in opposition. Let's look at the chart. We also have Venus here in opposition to Uranus, also between your fifth house. 
that has to do if you have your own career, if you have children, if you're in with a romantic partner or having thoughts about a romantic partner, uh, it's mo most likely with four planets here. You can see if you see the whole chart, you can see a lot is going on here. Actually, this is over here. Um, most it's the only sign where we have four planets, so it's the Scorpio party, um, and you will see that there's something here between your 11th house of your friendship, your circles of friends, something will suddenly happen or an epiphany, you will get an information from one of your friends or your groups of people or something will open up in this uh, organization you're a part of or a group you're a part of or club you're a part of or friend, friends or just a vision towards the future where you'll have an epiphany ah, this is what I have to do or you will have it, uh, an insight of something to do with a romantic partner, children, or your career, if you have your own uh, independent career, or uh, how to follow your heart. This will come this week. And you will also get a helping hand from your belief system. If you go to a church, if you meditate, if you have some re regular practices where you contact God, Neptune and the Sun is going to be in a, a really good position this week, between your fifth and your ninth, both sister, sister signs. So great week for you guys cancer great week to get information from god about what to do next definitely wow and then next week diddle do north node in your sign Whew. big changes big changes mars over there in your eighth house is showing you uh, once again about what to change on a very deep level and how to move forward there with self-esteem and now I'll turn the camera and take the other tarot card. So tarot card of the week for the Cancers. Tarot card of the week for the Cancers. Woohoo! Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm an Aries, I couldn't help it. <laughs> it's the lover's card. <laughs> so it's the fifth house thing. For some of you guys, there's something with a romantic partner. <laughs> oh yeah, so that's... <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Okay, calm down, Maria. <laughs> I hope that you will have an encounter with someone or that you are your already romantic partner. Maybe you can put out some rose leaves on the bed and... Enjoy each other's company with a deep heart connection, of course, spiritual connection. As I talked about last week, sacred com union, instead of just like sexual, fast, whatever, union, no sacred union where we connect with the heart. It can also be your inner masculine and feminine finally coming together, realizing that, okay, let's make space for the masculine or the feminine so there's a balance and a harmony. Now we're going to go on with the second part of the week for the ones that want to go deeper into the astrology. But first and foremost, I just want to say, don't follow twins, follow your heart. Yeah, you knew I was going to say that, right? <laughs> See you next week. Oh yeah, and just a little reminder. Remember, for everyone, doubt can ruin anything good. Doubt is a killer of trust, faith, love. It's closing the heart. So if you doubt someone, you doubt their intentions, if you doubt who they are, if you doubt, you have to know that maybe there's a reason for your doubt, but you also have to know that you destroy something between you and the other person whenever you choose the road of doubt. So sometimes if we doubt too much, sometimes it's maybe better to let go we're not able to actually just put trust because trust is love doubt is about no, I mean <laughs> maybe not the opposite but close to that is why whenever we doubt and doubt and doubt we have to know that we send other people that we doubt really negative energy and they feel it because there's nothing such there's no such thing as oh I don't feel it I mean I didn't say it I didn't well, it doesn't matter if you said it or not. If you doubt, you send the people you doubt really negative energy. And it's hitting back on you as well. So remember, next time you doubt that that has nothing to do with spirituality, you're not trusting the process. 
you don't have faith in, in the process is also the universe, God, creator, whatever you want to call this thing that we can connect to when our hearts are totally open. This thing that you might have tried in meditations in a silent moment where you feel you are at one with everything. You shut off from that whenever you doubt. Faith and trust is the way to go. Welcome to the second part of this program. For the ones that wants to go deeper, further down the rabbit hole with me. If you are on this channel, or if you're new to this channel, you will now be aware of that my job here is to reach spiritual goals of enlightenment is to help myself and others alter our level of consciousness, to clear, clean and purge old karma, old samskaras, you can look that up, samskaras, impressions, so that we can move forward without the change from our past and from the past of our parents. In our horoscope, we can always see, when I do a personal reading, how you inherited your parents, your fathers and your mothers, or the substitutes for a father or a mother's garbage, prisons, all of the unresolved karma that they came with. It's now your responsibility unless they have cleared it. That's why our horoscope is a key to unlocking our fullest potential to see where the downfalls are and how we can purge them and let go of them and move on. Every time we are in Scorpio season, which is once a year for one month, we have the chance, all of us, to really go in and clear the deepest, darkest storages of us, of our beings here as human as souls in human bodies. This means that these are not that easy times. You will see that other people will trigger your worst fears and your worst the the things that puts the most pressure upon you. Spirituality is when all faculties come into balance in our system. So we are seeking a balance, we are seeking a harmony. But in order to restore this balance that we naturally have as we come in here, pure as little babies, we need patience. We need tolerance with others. And we need trust. Have faith in the process. We need to develop acceptance and humbleness. And then we need to be able to learn how to listen to other people, not only with our minds, but with our hearts, our feelings and our souls. And remember that we are all adopted into the same family here on earth. So it doesn't take you far to just ju judge whoever's doing something to you. This is a part of your family. They are a part of you in Lakish. So I'm going on a retreat on the 27th until the 4th of October, of, of November. 27th of October until the, actually the 3rd or the 4th of November. The 4th I'm out. And this is the retreat I told you about earlier. I will be for one week facing only me in a room where there's no books, no internet, no television, and where this is the only thing that ever goes on here, in a retreat department center, where no one will come and talk to me, no one will come with food, I have food for a week, and I will not be in contact with the world. 
This is one way of really purging old stuff and going into really finding the core beneath all the si the noises and disturbances from our daily lives. I will make a video after that and you will see the effects to see if it's something that might benefit you one day. The following Monday I will have a knee operation where they will open up my knee. So first I'm cleaning my spiritual body, my astral body, my my soul, my psychological sides and then they will afterwards go into my knee first the left knee they will open and operate my my menisc and remove things that are stuck in there um so the physical is connected to the psychological elements so if you have something going on physically you have to know that they are connected to some psychological things so it's always a good idea to open up to all layers if you want to heal and cure my mission is to help people do just that, as I consider all of us to be family. I do this for free every week. We all have a spiritual mission and it's time to make a choice. You can either repeat an old pattern or you can find a new way to choose love and to love others and let your ego die. In Scorpio things die and reborn. And reborn again, re rebirth again. We are in, a sp in spiritual times where these spiritual uh, matters win over the 3D desires and hungers. So we have to find our way out of this super mental era and back to our inner voices so that we can hear our inside, our feminine side speak. Because it knows much more than the mental. So in Scorpio we go towards the real thing. But there's of course, there are traps along the way. Desires. It can also be sexual, of course. And the Saturn and Pluto conjunct junction is getting closer. Saturn is learning, teaching us about responsibility. To take responsibility for our lives. North Node in Leo the last week, this week, it wants happiness in its own way. Saturn will go into a trine with Neptune soon enough, not now, it's the first time in a long time. And we are moving towards this. Any astrological aspect is often just showing what has been along the way for a long time and when it's reaching the surface. What's been brewing? So what's brewing right now is this. When they come together, it's about higher spiritual purpose, true ascension to God, purity, and not to get caught up in subconscious patterns. So we need to find the ultimate spiritual mission of ours. The choices you make now are crucial. They are crucial. So this week, Venus is in opposition to Uranus, as I talked about. And they are in their opposite moods, so to speak, or let me put it another way. Venus is the ruler of Taurus, where Uranus is. And Venus is not in harmony in Scorpio. She's in exaltation there. And Uranus is in its fall in Taurus. It doesn't like Taurus. So Uranus moving to a higher place is what it wants. But as it's in its fall, because Taurus wants to hold on to things, and Uranus wants to let go of tension, of anything not serving us. So Venus in Scorpio is our true desires. And Uranus in Venus's sign is opening up for a higher spiritual, more harmonized desires. If we dare, do you dare? So there's something that we used to value highly that aren't right anymore. And we have to adjust ourselves and open our minds to let this thing go now. This is what we need to learn. And you have to find out what it is in your life. Venus is crossing over the limit between two worlds because she's retrograding 
into Libra. She's doing this this week on the 31st. And she's doing that with the sun in Scorpio. And the sun in Scorpio is true rawness, authenticity. This is who I am, we show the world. We are not afraid of being ugly and we are not afraid of our downsides. And how can I build this new life based upon higher values is what Uranus is asking in Taurus because Taurus is our values. And Uranus wants higher ascension, spiritual ascension. And with Uranus here, it's weird and radical ways of trying to figure this out. It's going to come up and Uranus is going to hold your hand for a short time only. Taurus wants to have someone hold it for a longer time and nurture, just like the moon, and a motherly figure. But Uranus is not like that. Uranus moves on because it's a rule of Aquarius where we have to help the whole world. So Uranus wants to tell us not to hold on to things for too long. And in Taurus it's asking not only will I get what I want, but also is it sustainable for me? There are sexual energies in Scorpio and uh, they want us to have this instant gratification and now fulfill our desires now. But we are at a destiny point of shifting where we are looking for things to be released from the past so that we can go on a higher path. Things that came from our parents as well. We inherit things from our parents. Very important. As I told you in the beginning, when I see a horoscope, when I do personal readings, and I see different aspects, I can always see how the parents were influ putting influence on, upon the children. Of course, it varies, and I always uh, look at, upon this in in a, a dialogue because we can have several figures as a fatherly figure. A brother can also be a, a grandparent, and uh, we need to know that if they, our authority figures, did not come through and also these things inside of them then they need to alter then we inherit them and you have to look for these sides within you so that whenever people are trying to tell you something teach you something that you need to know here in life it's not because they want to criticize you they are actually trying to show you the way so the people that criticize you try to try to see if even though that it hurts what they're saying is there something within their words that could be true and a hint of where to go next for you. There are things we hold on to in our outer, outer lives that often come from these places that we inherited from our parents. Uranus is in semi-square to Neptune in a while, for a while, and it brings about these unconscious sides of ourselves up. And that is also a way to alter through Uranus to solve the tension there. And it can bring about forgiveness to your parents to forgiveness to the people around you. When you figure out that it all comes from you, the pressure is not from others, it's from you somehow. Because you wouldn't feel, feel, feel the pressure from someone outside if it wasn't inside of you. So often people are just trying to show you the way. We have a lot of home aspects in November. Venus is going home on the 31st to Libra, her sign. We have Saturn in Capricorn, we have at home here. We have Jupiter in Sag on the 8th coming home. And uh, we have um, Neptune in Pisces. So we are going home this week. We are on our way home. But we need to find our way home to our higher selves. That is home. Home is where the heart is. Home is inside of us, it's not outside. We have to pick and make the right choices along the way. It's our responsibility, it's your responsibility. Right. 
So try not to lose yourself into desires. This, what this week is trying to tell you, to escapism. We escape in so many ways. Now in Denmark, for example, we say, oh, it's normal to drink a bottle of wine every day. Yeah, but that's escapism. You're running away from yourself. If you smoke weed and get doped, take drugs, drink alcohol, eat just for pleasure for a long time to escape, watch movies, escape into the world of a movie, escape into a world of a book. It's escapism, all of it. Escape into your work, escape, escape, escape. We have it all around us, but now is the time to alter, not tomorrow or in three weeks. So we are on our way home, but we need to do, do the home work to get there. Because we are on our way home to what we came here to do. Your mission, your purpose, your life purpose. And with you, if you're watching this right now and you're still on the channel, you are a light worker. And we are going home now. But responsibility to your body, soul and other people is what is crucial now. In Lakesh, I am another you. Respect others. But before we can reach the city of lights, we have to face our shadows and look at reality. We have also got the sun squaring Black Moon Lilith. Black Moon Lilith is... In Aquarius. She's what's called, who's called the bitch goddess. And she will also get some strong will, feisty things up. It's often the spokespeople for the disadvantaged Black Moon Lilith. And she will speak about dark issues. And she will often be distasteful and dis distorting or disturbing to the public. And the square has so much tension that is compelled to action. And she wants to do something also here in society. You will be able to see this maybe in the news as well. And it has something to do with unprocessed ra processed rage at, at being exiled and rejected is what she has. These itchy e qualities is often bringing about activists um, also mesmerizing agitators and troublemakers so take that will take the law into their own hands and have their own type of sense of humor and principle so like uh just as tough on 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 themselves they will be as they are on others so they aim high and have an intuition and a great survival instinct and um this will aid anyone who follows this path this week in their leap of faith. But of course, I will never encourage you to take this road too long because we have the south node here, so this is not the way. So if you feel these tendencies, try to turn them down this week. Mars is also blowing to that fire, so try to calm them down, even though you want to pursue them. The Venus um, trining, Neptune is increasing your sensitivity and of course we are in a time where we also have this as I said the conjunction between Jupiter and Mercury so it's enthusiasm could be good news optimism a happy frame of mind fortune broad mind broad mindedness generosity sociability but it's in Scorpio so it's more deep maybe not that sociable but it's all kinds of deals are favored here even though it's in a a darker spot, so it's also in a spot where investments are made and where you share other people's money with you in some way or the other. So you can make future plans and sign those kind of contracts. But since it's in uh, trying to Chiron, you can also help others here because Chiron is our wound, so you can help others with what you've been going through um, so that you can be the guiding light and find the blessings in the mist, mixed blessings, you know, travel into the land of what hurts with with someone being Jupiter here, guiding you, a guiding light. Because only you can decide to become okay again. Mercury will talk about the hurt 
and understand it finally. Finally, there's something inside of you that you now have the chance to understand. Last but not least, I will just say that me, uh, Neptune is in trying to Sirius and has been for a while, a little while, and for a little while longer. It's about higher morals and standards. It encourages hope and selflessly helping others, generosity, a community spirit, you might say. So it's also about maybe taking a spiritual quest to seek the truth and... Uh, you know, talk with gurus, psychics, priests, etc. And or others will come to you for enlightenment. So follow your dreams, your visions and your meditations. And remember, last but not least, words are only so much. We are communicating much more from our heart, our bodies. Our dreams are talking to us. People are saying things without words. Try to listen to what they say with their hearts and what you say. And then try, once you talk to others, to see if you can stay in a peaceful space where you feel God, the universe, light, bright, peace shining through you while you talk to others. That is the greatest gift you can give, gift you can give anyone. And you will receive the same back. Somehow, someday. It's all worth it. Let's do this together as light workers. Let's open up and clear and clean so that we can move forward together. I hold the curtain while you walk through. And you will probably do the same for me. Thanks for watching this week. See you next week. A little later next week because I'm on a silent retreat and I will share my condition with you once I leave it. Follow your heart. Thank you. Don't follow trends, follow your heart.